Right. I can't believe there's an actual physical award. Um, my my four-year-old yesterday said to me, well, I explained what I was doing. She said, oh, you'll get a trophy. And I said, I don't think I'm going to get a trophy. <laughs> uh, and she said, it won't be silver, it will be gold. And I was like, no, seriously, that, it, oh, if, uh, if I'm lucky, I'll get like a piece of paper. And this went back and forth for ages. And it got to the stage where I promised her that if there was a trophy, she could have it. <laughs> um, so if you see anyone from the University of York, can you just tell them that there wasn't any trophies <laughs> this year due to cutbacks? Um, University of York is sort of medium-sized university. We've got about 17,000 students. And every year, about probably 4,000 or something like that come through the doors who are new. Um, and we have a job to reach them and help them understand what we do, how we can help them. And obviously, it's important that they use the library because, you know, we're a big part of the university service and we can't just lose a, a, a vast tract of our students. But it's also really important for them because we genuinely will make their life easier if they let us. So there's a big campaign every year to try and uh, essentially initiate the students. So in US libraries, it's known as orientation. Over here, more often, as induction. There is a, a big problem with all library inductions, and there's, there is a smaller problem with our specific ones that we used to do. So the, the problem with library induction generally is that you're, you know, you're 18 years old, you're sat um, with a group of people you've just met, you've literally just found out where you're going to live, uh, you, you're, you're embarking on the biggest adventure of your life, and you're two days into it, and then there's a librarian at the front telling you how the different ebook packages work. And it's just, it's the worst possible time. And, and most library inductions take the form of a librarian telling the students everything they know about the library. It's, it, there's so much information that goes out there. And it's too much, and it's at the wrong time. And it's simply not that important compared to the other things that they're learning about. So we swamp people at a time when they're not ready for it, and they can't possibly hope to retain the information. With York particularly, we did big induction games. Um, so this is an example of one, and they were nice games. Like put, people put loads of time into it, and a decent amount of money, actually, um, into this. Uh, so this is a murder in the library game, for example, um, where we had a crime scene in the, in the foyer, and there was a big exercise you had to do, and you had to solve the murder. And as part of solving the murder, you would learn how to use e-books and e-journals and where things were. But the trouble was, there was a huge investment and not much of a return. And if we were lucky, maybe a couple of hundred students would complete the activity. Um, and so we wanted to try something different because we didn't feel like it was worth the amount of time and financial stuff that we were pouring into this. So in 2016, uh, the project group for induction was chaired by me and basically uh, I came up with a, a new plan and the plan was to run it like a marketing campaign. That's basically what I wanted to do, run it like a proper marketing campaign. And as the last two presentations have shown, it's campaigns that make marketing work. I feel very strongly about that. It's, it's when you do things over a concerted period of time with a particular focus and a message, that's when the users actually get that message and change their behavior. And ultimately, when we're marketing, we are trying to get them to change their behavior. And that's quite a big ask. So I wanted to run induction like a marketing campaign. So that meant, first of all, stripping it down. Uh, um, Overcomplication is the absolute enemy of, of good communication. So getting rid of everything that wasn't absolutely essential to the message. Um, Cross-promoting it so that people were seeing the same message on more than one platform. It's really important because obviously not everybody is on all the platforms, but also those that are seeing the messages in different places will get that second nudge that might make them do something different. You know? So they might see a, a message on Twitter and go, oh, that sounds really good. I like the sound of that. But that's not enough to make them change their plans. And if they see a second message on Instagram or a leaflet they pick up or someone talking to them at an event, Along those same lines, that can be the push that they need to actually move on to changing their behavior and visiting the library website or coming into the building or following us on whatever. So cross-promotion is good. Clear calls to action so that they're not just thinking, oh, this is nice, but actually I know what to do about the fact that I'm interested in this. Um, tie it a bit more closely with what the central university marketing was doing anyway. Um, and we used the hashtag viewerY tips to tie it all together. And this proved to be really important. I felt a little bit like um, when I said, let's put this under the umbrella of a hashtag, it felt a little bit like I was a sort of, you know, um, hey, fellow kids type old person trying to go, hey, guys, let's use a hashtag. I'm 36 and I don't really know what one is. Um, but it, but it's actually it was really important but to have an umbrella uh, for reasons that I'll explain. So when I uh, work with other libraries around marketing, um, we talk a lot about using a, a campaign structure. And we heard about the Oasis one earlier. There's, um, there's, there's, there's various ones. And the one that I've developed, I call the CAPE campaign. And basically, there is four stages to it. And for each of those stages, 
There are three questions that you ask yourself as a library to make sure what you're doing is proper marketing and not just one-off promotion. And it's those kind of little details that actually make the stuff work. So for example, this is the aims section of our CAPE campaign document for this induction session. You probably can't see it, but I've just tweeted a link to the slides if you do actually want to read this in a bit more detail. Um, but basically, you ask what you want to achieve, what are the specific objectives, so how are you going to achieve it, and what segments is the campaign aimed at? And a big part of marketing well is dividing your audience up into groups and trying to tailor the communication to each group. So we basically set up this full document. Um, I kind of wrote a draft of it, got the rest of the project team involved, and then we shared it with other people. And we also went out to different teams within the library and told them about what we were doing. I think that's really important to get everybody in the organization to understand what the aim is. And, and they feel interested as well. But there's lots of sections of the library that often feel like they don't really get in the loop. So when you're doing a piece of marketing, it's good to tell everyone what you're doing. Just brief them in a room. You know, just get a crowd of people around you and just say, this is what we're trying to achieve. This is why. Here's how you can help. And we felt that made a big difference. We got positive feedback about that. So that was the aim, basically. Um, and I will now show you some examples of the UOY tips that we came up with. So we use loads of different platforms. So for a start, we use presentations. We did these face-to-face -face in the room with the students when we met them as part of induction in, in departments. And we also put them online on SlideShare, which has been mentioned before today, which is a really nice platform for sharing stuff. Um, and we found that the Your Search is Our library catalogue, we found that this was more popular than the video that we used to have explaining how Your Search works. So we've actually embedded it on the home page. And it's now had 348,000 views because it's right there and everybody can just get to it really easily. So we used basically nice slides as one of our tools. Um, we use Twitter and uh, we tried to use images where possible for all the reasons that have been talked about today. But we did just tweet some, some text as well uh, and always using the hashtag UOY tips. And we tried to encourage the students to join in with their own tips and they would not. That was the one big failure of the campaign is that we imagined this would become part of a peer-to-peer -peer sharing thing and we could not get them to do it. Um, we also asked the Central University to get involved uh, because what we really wanted was to have basically a well of useful advice for people to dip into that wasn't just related to the library, so that it had more credibility and more value as a result of not being solely library focused. So that's an example of a, a, a uni tweet that wasn't about informational libraries, but was nevertheless using the UOY tips umbrella, or using the hashtag. We put stuff on Instagram. With Instagram, the image is the most important thing. It's not particularly good as a hard promotional tool in our experience. So basically, you find a nice image first, and then if there is a suitable marketing message to apply to it, you can put it on. So this is a nice picture of the Minster Library, and there is a UOY tip about the fact that you can actually use this if you're a York student. But really, people are liking it for the image, not necessarily for the advice. We're just kind of sneaking it in there in case it's useful. Uh, we made a YouTube playlist, so UOI tips, new students start here with the most relevant videos that we could come up with for, for new students. Um, we wrote a blog post for the, for the blog about five ways to get started. Um, we had a new starters web page. We had physical leaflets. So the only cash that this campaign cost, obviously apart from staff time, but that's just accounted for anyway, was getting some postcards printed with basically five things to do on them. Um, and I think we probably got you know several thousand done, and it cost a few hundred quid. But that was the only kind of financial outlay. Uh, and we also made a, a lib guide um, with everything in one place. So this was just at uh, bit.ly slash UOI tips. And it had everything that we'd done pulled into one set of pages. And we put that link out there at the end of presentations as something that people could really easily remember to find all the stuff that we've been talking about and more advice. We also use Kahoot. Kahoot came up earlier as an alternative to Poll Everywhere or Mentimeter. Um, the thing that's really great about Kahoot when you're with a group of students is that they put their names in. And then at the end of every round, after you ask the quiz questions, there is a, uh, a score uh, with the top five students' names there. So you, as the person making the Kahoot, can delete stuff if they put an offensive name. Um, but they didn't, actually. They, they, you know, there's a lot of people putting in like the Archbishop of Banterbury and stuff like that, but that was as far as it went. Um, and they absolutely love the competitive element of it. So the quiz is basically an excuse to show off about what we have. So how much cloud storage do you get as a York student, part of Google Apps? And then you know, the options were like a gigabyte, a terabyte, 
something bigger and then Unlimited. And almost no one picked Unlimited and it was Unlimited and then they gasp when they see it. Even with the really mundane questions, framing it in front as part of a question so that they thought about it first seemed to make the information more interesting to them. So we asked the world's boringest question, how many books can you borrow as a York student? And when uh, the answer came up on the screen is 75, people were like, no! <laughs> and it, and it, sometimes it took quite a long time to get them to calm down after a question was revealed uh, before you could move on to the next question. So this was a really big success in terms of not just telling them stuff but asking them things, as all under this same UOY tips umbrella. So this business of having a hashtag was really important. Um, if any of you don't use social media at all. A hashtag is literally just letters and numbers after the hash symbol. But the difference between that and any other thing that you see is that you can click on it. And when you click on it, you find all the other things which have used that hashtag. So UI tips did not exist as a hashtag. Really important when you're using hashtag to check that no one else is using it already. It didn't exist. There was, it, there was no, you could search Google for UI tips and nothing would come back. So we could therefore curate this set of information under one place so that someone could find one thing useful, click on it, and find the other things that were also useful. So it has lots of advantages from a marketing point of view, the main one of which is that it is memorable. We, don't, we weren't saying to people, go to york.ac.uk slash library, or please go to facebook.com slash UOY, or anything like that. We were just saying, all you need to do is remember UOY tips, and you can find stuff. We promise you, wherever you are, across whatever platform you're interested in, uh, you can probably find some UOY tips stuff. And at the worst comes to the worst, you can just Google it. and. It's gone from there being zero results for your white tips to thousands now because you can just type it into Google and you will find stuff. So it's cross-platform. You can go across it all. And it endures. And this is really important because it solves the problem of um, induction basically happening too early for the students because you can go back to it at any time. So there will be probably a 1,000 students right now in January, working out they should have listened in September when we told them about the library. And they will be too embarrassed to come and ask about it because they're like, well, we should have, you know, we're supposed to already know this stuff. So UOY Tips allows them to basically anonymously go back in time and find out the stuff that they missed um, just because that's all they need to remember. And they can type it into whatever network they're on and they'll find some stuff. So it's always there and it stops people feeling like they're too embarrassed to ask for help. And of course, as I keep banging on about, it allows people to see the key messages more than once. And that gives you that opportunity to, to make a difference in behavior. And it gives that opportunity for people to go past the stage of thinking that's interesting to the stage of I'm now going to do X that I wasn't going to do before. Um, and so when we reproduce the message in a video and also you see it on a different social media platform and also you're told it by someone, that really starts to sink in. And so the people for whom that is a relevant message will go so far as to act on that message. So the results uh, were basically really, really, really positive. In as far as we can measure what happened, it worked really well, with the exception of trying to get the students involved in making their own tips. So I think it's really easy to measure outputs. It's really easy to measure what we did. It's much harder to measure the outcomes, what happened as a result of what we did. So we know that the amount of people coming in through the doors of the library went up in November versus October. But the year before, we didn't have the turnstiles turned on. So we don't know if we got more people through the door overall. And even if we did know that, there was more students. So it's really hard to say our marketing has had X effects on the student behavior. All we can do is ask for feedback, ask people what they thought, and measure the outputs and how people responded to them. So in, in, in those terms, more students visited the welcome stand than, than had ever come before. So that we took that as a positive side. More than 2,000 students used the Kahoot quiz. It's part of the face-to-face -face things, and they all absolutely loved that. Um, the online materials had about 3,700 views in, the, in that first month of October, and lots of engagement on social media. And we also got a lot of unsolicited feedback from departments, heads of departments or academics getting in touch with us without us asking for feedback and saying, we absolutely love this. It worked so much better than last year. So there was a very much a, a sense that it worked really well. Everyone in the project team got like a kind of internal award from the university as well. Um, so, so insofar as we can measure this stuff, it worked very well. In terms of what happens now, because obviously this was 16, 17, and we're now into 17, 18, and in the future, 
The first big change is that we're not making any big change. Every year we, did, we ripped it up and started again with a whole new thing, whereas this year we just evolved the previous year's stuff. And that made such a difference because we were building on materials that we know worked and so it took less time and, and we were able to focus more on the things that we went, know went down well and not spend so much time on the stuff that didn't seem to make much of an impact. We put more emphasis on the website. We didn't really... Uh, I didn't really think the website was going to be that big a deal. The, so the york.ac.uk slash library slash info for new students or whatever it is. I didn't think that was going to be a key thing. But when we asked the students afterwards, we did some polls with them about how they found out about how to use the library. Loads of them mentioned the website. So for this year, we have addressed the fact that it's clearly more important to them than we thought. And we've made the website page better and have more relevant information without overloading it with stuff. <coughs> Um, we have put a much bigger emphasis on Instagram. Instagram is hugely important for all libraries, but academic libraries in particular. And it was very much in its infancy for this campaign, whereas for the next campaign, we had it much more established. So we've used Instagram a lot, and that's gone down very well. And we have created some videos using Powtoon and Videoscribe, and they're both tools that don't require a librarian to be on camera. Um, which is always a bonus, and you don't even need a microphone, it's just, it's all in the PC, and they're really nice tools. And in fact, my boss was about to bid for some money to get someone to make a video, uh, and I said, no, let's not do that, because as soon as that video goes out of date, it'll be lost forever and of no value. If we make something ourselves, we can update it the second it goes out of date, and just re-upload it to YouTube. So we're committed now to doing stuff in-house using these tools. Um, it's not that we've completely ruled out the idea of a a live action video if you like, but just for most things we think we can use uh, video editing tools. Videoscribe we pay a, a yearly fee for, um, but Powtoon you can use completely free and it does a really good job of being decent when it's free. And if you, if you just um, Google URY Tips YouTube, um, you'll find an example of a Powtoon and an example of Videoscribe. Um, and you can have a look at them and see if you think they might be suitable for your library. Final thing is, big difference. We found a way to get the students' own tips, which was to have a whiteboard for them to write on with what are your UI tips. It turns out they just didn't want to be associated with the philanthropic act of helping out their peers. Uh, and th that, they went mad for that. And the, so my colleague Martin, who took over chairship of the group for this year, he had to be down first thing in the morning every day taking a photo of the board, wiping it clean because it was full. Uh, and they would say things like, um, you know, that some of them would be really earnest ones, like, you really should learn how to use EndNote quickly. We're like, whoa, really? And then some would be like, uh, you know, the library gets busy, so put your towel down, get involved, uh, and stuff like that. So it was a really good mixture of stuff, and some of them were genuinely brilliant and kind of funny, and some of them were just irrelevant. Uh, you know, there was, a, there was a mixture, but it was a really, really nice thing to have the tips from the students, not just from us. And so, we, of course, we reused them in our promotion and we you know we will tweet links to them we put pictures on instagram we've made a video entirely out of their own tips so we're not just reflecting our voice we're reflecting their own views back at them and that's been a really big change final thing is um the university is really going all in on using uoi tips um, which is great. So they've got this whole page of it on the main site, not the library site. Lots of these images for each one which appear on digital screens all over the campus. Lots of information about you know, various things to do with the library. So basically we're getting closer to the idea of what I wanted to do originally, which is sort of a, a stab at content marketing. Um, and the definition here of content marketing, um, put my glasses back on, uh, a type of marketing that involves the creation and sharing of online materials, but does not explicitly promote a brand and send it to stimulate interest in the product or services. So in other words, what we're trying to do is not hard sell them about the library. We're trying to create something genuinely useful, which is a whole load of advice from the uni, from careers, from IT, from the library, from other students, using UI tips as the umbrella. And we happen to be just quite prominent within that set of advice, giving them information about the library. So we hope that this becomes a sort of trusted network of information that we can be part of, rather than us trying to create our own brand new channel of communication to the students. Uh, and so far, it seems to be working really well, and we've got much more traction than we have with any of this stuff before. So um, if you want to see any of this stuff, bit.ly slash tips is the place where we kind of brought together a load of the different things in one go. So that has a lot of our materials. Um, Lib Innovation is where we write about this kind of thing. And UOI Library is our Twitter and our Instagram account, so you can see some examples of what we're doing. Um, if you want to talk to me about it, then my 
email, and no, my web address and stuff is written on the building. That's not actually on the building in real life. I just, <laughs> I've put them on there. That's, that's um, for next year when I take over the library. No. Uh, so um, I, I, as you can tell, I really enjoy talking about this stuff because I think it's interesting to, to do, um, to try and get marketing into areas where it's not explicitly normally marketing. So uh, do feel free to get in touch and chat to me about it if you like. Um, basically, the, the thing that I've taken away from this is that uh, although a marketing plan is a good thing, and having like an annual marketing library plan is, is a nice thing, the more important thing in terms of tangible results is having a campaign plan. Uh, having a campaign, actually marketing in campaigns in a, in a concerted way so that your users don't, it's not that you're stopping telling them other things, it's just that you're focusing on one area above others for a concerted period of time. It really, really makes a difference in terms of whether or not you get the engagement that you want from the marketing that you do. So thank you very much for listening, and thank you for the place of the world. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.